Hello Chris here, in this video we are going to take a look at the different rigid body collision shapes. There is a total of 8 different collision shapes for rigid bodies as you can see. Box, spear, capsule, cylinder, cone, convex hull, mesh and compound parent. The default will be convex hull. Now we are going to take a look at all of them one by one. So first open blender. Now we need an object to test the different rigid body collision shape. So select this cube. Go to edit mode using tab, go to face selection mode, select all using A key, then press I in the keyboard to insert, then press I again to insert individually and insert it to something like this. Now hold to plus E in the keyboard, then select extrude individual faces and extrude the faces to something like this. Now we got a shape that's looking like this. Go to object mode again, select this one, right click, set to origin origin to geometry. Now press N in the keyboard and make sure the location is 0, 0, 0. Then press N to hide that window. Now we got an object that's looking like this. Now we need to add a rigid body to this. Select this. Go to physics properties. Then select rigid body and change this active to passive. We need this object to stay exactly where it is. We don't want it to move. So make sure it's a passive object. Now if you go to the collision tab here, there is an option shape. The default will be convex hull as you can see. Now we're going to take a look at the box option. So select this and change it to box. As you can see, when we change it to box, there is a box surrounding the object like this. If you go to front view using numbered one, as you can see, all the vertices of this object is being enclosed inside a box shape like this. Now, if we scale this object in the Z axis, S to scale, Z to scale, as you can see, the object is scaling, also the box is scaling too. Likely to cancel that scale. If I select this and scale this in the X axis, as you can see, the box is also expanding like this right click to cancel any movement and scaling now we're going to add a cube shift plus a mesh cube g to move z to move and place it here now go to front view using numbered one select this one add an active rigid body then press play as you can see this cube is acting like this object is a cube right now so if i select this by going to first frame g to move and place it here then press play as you can see, this object is acting like it's a cube right now. Now we're going to take a look at the spear collision shape. If I change this to spear, as you can see, if you go to front view, this object is being enclosed inside a sphere like this. If you go to front view and move the cube to here, then press play. As you can see, this object is currently a sphere right now. The collision shape changed this object into a sphere like this. The radius of that sphere will be the farthest point from the origin. As you can see this one. That's why we extruded all of these faces in the same distance like this. Go to first frame, front view, G to move. I place this cube here, then press play. As you can see, object is acting like if this were a sphere right now. Now we're going to take a look at the capsule option if i change this to capsule as you can see it's the same as a sphere go to first frame press play it's exactly like this if you go to front view select this shift to d to duplicate x to move along x axis and place this one here if i select this and scale this in the z axis as you can see it's like this if i apply the scale using ctrl a then apply the scale. As you can see, the capsule option is like this. The furthest point from the origin will be the length of the capsule, as you can see. If we go to front view and change this back to sphere, as you can see, in this case of the sphere collision shape, the furthest point from the origin will be the radius of the sphere. But in the case of capsule, it will be its length. I'm going to delete this. If I select this and change this to cylinder, as you can see, this object is being enclosed inside a cylinder right now. If I press play by going to first frame, as you can see, this object is being enclosed inside an imaginary cylinder. And this object is also acting like it's a cylinder right now. If we go to front view, G to move, place here, press play. As you can see, it's like this. If I change this to capsule and press play, as you can see, it's like this. If I change this to cylinder, go to first frame, press play, as you can see, it's like this. If I select this and change this to cone, 
as you can imagine this collision shape will be assumed in the shape of a cone right now if i go to front view and move this cube and place it here then press play as you can see part of the object outside of the cone collision shape will not be affected by this cube go to first frame press play as you can see the object is going to that part of the object outside of this cone right now i go to first frame front view move this cube to here then press play as you can see it's like this then select this if i change this to convex hull then go to first frame front view press play as you can see it's like this if i go to first frame move this cube and move this to here then press play as you can see this cube is interacting with this object as if there is something here this is because in the case of convex hull if i place the mouse cursor over here then there is a mesh like surface encompassing all vertices best results with the fewer vertices which means as you can see this object is acting like there is a surface around this object encompassing all of these vertices so the convex hull is suitable for objects that doesn't have any cavities or extrusion like in this object if there are any cavities or extrusion in an object when we select the convex hull option the cavities will not be displayed in the simulation as you can see right now if i press play as you can see it's like this now if i select this and change this to mesh then go to front view using number one press play as you can see this object is acting like the collision shape is in the exact shape of the object that it's being applied to if I select this cube, G to move and place this here, then press play. As you can see, every single vertices of this object is participating in the simulation. In the mesh collision shape option, the shape will be the exact same as of the object, taking into account of every single vertices of the object. But in the case of mesh though, it's going to take a lot of calculations and the simulation is going to be a little slow since it needs to calculate every single one of the vertices as you can see. When you're using mesh collision shape, be careful though, if your object have a lot of vertices, when you change it to mesh, it's going to take a lot of time to calculate. Since this object only have a small small number of vertices it's not going to be a problem now we're going to take a look at the compound parent collision shape so in order to do that select this and delete it go to first frame I'm going to add a torus shift plus a mesh torus go to here go to top using number seven go to wireframe mode so that i can see this clearly then i'm going to reduce this minor radius to 0.2 now go to solid mode g to move z to move on places here now if i select this add a rigid body and change this to mesh since there is a cavity here we can't use the convex hull option if i use the convex hull option and press play as you can see it's going to sit above this object like this so select this change this to mesh then go to first frame press play as you can see it's like this As you can see, if I play the simulation longer, this object is going to jump around like this. This is because the mesh is going to take a lot of calculation since this one have a lot of vertices. We can use the compound parent option to make the simulation a lot more stable. So in order to do that, go to first frame, select this one, shift plus S, then select cursor to select it. This will place a 3D cursor at the center of the object like this. Go to top using number 7. Go to wireframe mode. Shift plus A, mesh. I'm going to add a cylinder. Now we need to scale the cylinder. Before we do that, go to solid mode. Select this one. Go to object properties. Then go to visibility. We don't want this object to be visible in the render. So turn it off then go to viewport display i'm going to change this display as wire that way we can see this object even if this is being enclosed inside it don't worry about it we're going to clarify it in a second go to top view go to wireframe mode art rotate x to rotate 90 degree enter g to move x to move and place this here press n in the keyboard change this to minus one that way it's going to be in the middle like this then press n to hide this window just to scale and scale this to something like this 
we can press shift to increase in the smaller agreements s to scale y to scale and scale it to something like this press n you can see the exact dimension i get to solid mode this object is being enclosed by this one now we need to duplicate this around this object all of it so go to top view again go to wireframe mode i'm going to duplicate this easily so in order to do that go here change this pivot point to 3d cursor select this Control plus a we need to apply the scale then shift to d to duplicate right click to cancel any movement r to rotate 90 degree enter this will rotate in the z axis 90 degree select both of them shift to d again r to rotate z to rotate 180 degree enter then select all four of this shift to d again r to rotate z to rotate 22.5 then shift D again, R to rotate, Z to rotate 22.5. Now we need to duplicate this one more time. Shift D again, R to rotate, Z to rotate 22.5. And uh, now if we go to solid mode, as you can see, this object is being completely duplicated by this one. That way the inside of this object can be interacted with this one. So in order to do that, we need to select all of this. Go to wireframe mode select all of this go to top view we need to deselect this one so control select deselect the torus now we need to move this into a new collection press m in the keyboard new collection children then press ok now shift to select this torus to make it the active object now we need to parent all of this to the torus so control p in the keyboard select object this will parent all of these objects to the torus as you can see now we need to add rigid body to all of this object rigid body add active this will add an active rigid body to all of this select the torus alone then go to physics properties change this collision shape to compound parent now if i press play as you can see this simulation is a lot stable a simple example i'll show you how to do that select all of this go to top view s to scale then control a apply the scale go to top view again shift to d to duplicate x to move and move it to here make sure it's not overlapping on this side now we need to rotate this r to rotate x to rotate 90 degree enter now select all of this control select this one on the lamp front view using number add one shift d to duplicate x to move and place this here make sure it's not overlapping now go to first frame go to solid mode press play as you can see it's acting like this as you can see right now this simulation is a lot more stable than the previous one there is no jumping around in this one as you can see this is a compound parent rigid body shape That's it for this video. If you like this video so far, please give a like to this video in the bottom. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye for now.